Hello, Serge here from a driving range in Germany. I got it right this time. All right, today I want to talk about an age-old problem that was absolutely taught to everybody, and and it's still basically in all the books and all the videos that have been out there for the last 50 years, and I think it's still being taught a lot because I'm running into it an awful lot again. And I guess I'm running into it because on some of these golf schools, I get students that have come to it that are coming with a Sergite friend, but they don't know that much about it. And so they haven't heard, they haven't read the books or the manuals or any of the videos. And that, that, that thought is what I call tucking the right elbow. Years and years ago, everyone was taught to keep the right elbow close to the right hip on the way back if you're a right-hander. They wanted you to keep it close because back then they were feeling that, that that's how you keep control of the club and, and, and have more control to hopefully hit it well. Now, at the same time, they always used to teach that the left arm is supposed to stay, the left or lead arm for a right-hander, naturally it would be the right hand for a left-hander, is supposed to stay relatively straight, okay? And all I ever heard people say was, I can't keep my left arm straight during the swing, I don't know what's wrong. Well, I got big news for you, all right? If you just want to check how far your left arm is supposed to be to be real, to relatively straight, by relatively straight means I don't want it. We we don't want it locked or hyperextended like this because you see what that does. That that actually arches the, elbow, the the wrist down. You just want to take it from here and get up there, and a little flexation is okay because again, what what is what is okay flexion? That it never breaks. So. And when you've, when you've got a little bit of flexion, that's actually stretching the muscles more from, from the, el the wrist to the elbow and the elbow on the and a higher elbow, part of the elbow to the shoulder, it, gives, it stretches both muscles more, so we're getting a better stretch. So just stand here, put your elbow right there, stretch your arm out to there, and put your hand there, and look where your right elbow is. It's nowhere near your right side. So I, I've got an, I got an expression for this thing. I call that being a huggy bear. El foldo huggy bear. You get up here and you fold huggy bear. Well, I like to tell I like to tell folks, you hug your wife and your kids and your grandkids, but you don't hug yourself. And the El foldo goes on both sides too, because again, they some people who if you fold here, the club kind of just gets thrown down at the ball, whether driver or irons in your hand, it throws down and then it pops back up and you hug fold on both sides. Today I'm going to say this. Today this is still called a flying right elbow. Now you see that elbow right there? What do you see here? An equilateral triangle. They still call that a flying right elbow. Because why? The best way to identify it, see how the club is straight up? It's light and it's in harmony gravity, what we want in the mitt and up the tree. But today in the rotational swing, they want that club to come back here. They want it parallel to this club on a parallel plane up here. And the way they teach that is for you as you're swinging up to take that elbow, they want it to move away now, but they want the right arm in a right angle to the ground. Now see here, it's not quite a really good equilateral triangle, correct? And this elbow's down. Now if you're standing here and you just take your arm and put it up in there like you're trying to, you know, take, the, uh, take an oath of office or whatever, you just do that. I don't know about you, but I just feel a pull from all the way here, all the way down, right through there, right down on my wrist when I do that. Add a golf club to it and then put, put the club, put the club at that angle, especially with a driver, and you're trying to hit the ball hard, you get right here, now you're coming in so flat, you, gotta, you, gotta, you have to really release it hard, you could be in trouble. This, this is still wrong. It's not the natural position for your arm to be. So, you wanna just let your arm always swim straight up, in the mitt and up the tree to there. And guess what's gonna happen on the forward swing? Through and up, and you got an example right here. So the best way to learn this is you get in what I call the cactus position. The cactus drill. You bend over. See when I bend over here? I bend over. The hand's right here. This is how you do it. You take. You can take your right hand and swing it up to there. That's for that back swing. And then you can do what? Then you go from here to there, and that's the forward swing. And when you do that to the back swing, the club is right over the center of the left shoulder. Just like when I swing here, up to here, the club should be right over the center of the left shoulder. If your club at the top starts getting too far outside your shoulders, then you're getting too wide and that's going to start causing problems and that's going to start causing problems in solidness of contact directionals directions and everything else and start adding stress to your swing especially your wrist and forearms all right so we covered a lot of this one gave you a lot of good things so we want to swing up to the equilateral triangle el elbows horizontal to the ground on both sides if the elbows are crooked to the ground tilted to the ground either way you are not in the proper 
peak performance position. So it's straight up, straight through, and you finish with the level, level elbows horizontal to the ground on both sides. That's it for the surge for today. And where your rebels are supposed to be, making a peak performance golf swing.